God be with you. In our prayers for sympathy today, you will hear the name Charles Fuller. Many of you don't, don't know who he is, but he is the man responsible. It was his vision that uh, developed into what we now call the lighthouse model for child care, family and child care development. So uh, he died this past week. His funeral is this afternoon. Our gospel text today uh, is one where they tried to trap Jesus, the Pharisees and a group called the Herodians. They tried to trap Jesus with a question. Is it lawful to pay taxes or not? And we'll see uh, what that means for us. Our, uh, let's prepare our hearts for worship through the brief order of confession and forgiveness found on the third page of your bulletin. Please rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the sovereign over all the earth, the wisdom from on high, our merciful judge and savior. Let us boldly approach the throne of grace, trusting in God's mercy and love. Generous and faithful God, we confess to you all the ways, known and unknown, that we reject and undermine your steadfast love. Though you made us your people, we treat strangers with suspicion. Though you forgave our debts, we collect without mercy. Yet we are quick to pass judgment on others. Have mercy on us, O God, and remember your promise to us for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of, the, of our God will stand forever. Through the living word, Jesus Christ, God forgives your every debt, your every sin, and gives you a new heart and a new spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Share God's peace by greeting those around you.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Lord be with you. And also with you. Sovereign God, raise your throne in our hearts. Created by you, let us live in your image. Created for you, let us act for your glory. Redeemed by you, let us give you what is yours. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen.
A reading from the book of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped to subdue nations before him and strip kings of their robes, to open doors before him and the gates shall not be closed. I will go before you and level the mountains. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and riches hidden in secret places, so that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel, my chosen, I call you by your name. I surname you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I arm you, though you do not know me, so that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is no one besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make real and create woe. I, the Lord, do all these things. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Once a year, we bless our quilts. So I would like you, well, first off, everyone here who has uh, been involved in making these quilts, please stand. There we go. And there, there are quite a number. I think they deserve Put your hand on a quilt and let's bless them. Gracious God, as we place our hands on these quilts, we join giver and receiver, recognizing the unity of all your people in the body of Christ. We celebrate, celebrate being, being the, the children, children of, God. of God. We give thanks for the variety of gifts that compose these quilts, donations of fabric, thread and sewing machines, the faithful people who cut the squares, design the patterns, sew the tops, iron the fabric, make backs and fillers, tie and stitch the bindings, provide publicity, donate boxes, pack the quilts, bring food to sustain the quilters, and contribute the money for shipping these quilts. We celebrate generosity. We give thanks for the fellowship of all who work together to make the quilts, the laughter, the shared stories, the joy of crafting something with one's hands and heart for another, and the time to reflect and wonder about the recipient. We celebrate, celebrate community. community. The quilts and the pews today will be distributed locally, and the quilts we send as a sign of God's love and blessing for each person who receives one, trusting that their quilt will be a source of comfort and hope in the midst of disaster and fear a symbol of Christ's love to those who suffer, a reminder that each recipient is a beloved child of God. We pray that the quilts will serve a useful purpose in the life of the recipient, that they will bring warmth in the cold, shelter from the sun and heat, a wall for a home, or a carrier for a few precious belongings. May it be a step in recovering one's life and a message of care from someone they may never meet. We celebrate hope in the midst, midst of, of life life's trials. trials. We remember those who have received our quilts in the past and pray that their lives have returned to stability. We, we celebrate, celebrate the, the gift, gift of, of life. life. We ask that you bless the fruits of our labor and the whole mission of Messiah Lutheran Church, that together we may minister to our neighbors in need. Bless all who give and all who receive as we are sown together in the unity of your Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our second lesson is from 1 Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the Church of the Thessalonians. In God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. 
We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, beloved by God, that he has chosen you because our message of the gospel came to you, not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction, just as you know what kind of persons we prove to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for in, this, in, this, in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy, inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you, and now you turn to God from idols to serve a living and a true God and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth, and show deference to no one. For you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Been in, uh, I've been in Kansas the past couple of days, at Overland Park, Kansas anyway, uh, at the Bishop's, excuse me, the Synod Council meeting. I'm on the Synod Council and at, uh, three times a year we have those meetings. So, uh, there's things happening in, in Kansas. How many of you have uh, heard of uh, Sam Brownback, who, who is now the governor of Kansas? I, I um, met Sam Brownback when I was a pastor back there, and I have a warm spot in my, hand, my, my heart for Sam Brownback. It has nothing to do with politics. It has to do with when he was a senator. Well, back up a little bit. I, I had a parishioner who was diagnosed with MS, and as that d disease progressed, he eventually wound up in a wheelchair. And his name was Bill. Bill had a son, Alan. Alan, for a while there, 
didn't know what was, it didn't have any direction in life when he was in high school until he met an army recruiter. And then the army recruiter took him under his wing. Uh, Alan was really a bright kid and uh, really became a mentor to him. Uh, got him up at 5.30 every morning. Took him out running and exercising. Made him do his homework. Became a stellar student. Uh, became uh, part of the ROTC program in high school. Graduated went into the military, became a military, an MP, military police officer, but then was diagnosed with bone cancer in his leg. They gave him all the treatment he needed, the uh, chemotherapy and the radiation, had to do, um, remove part of the bone in his leg and do bone grafts. And while he was in the military hospital, Sam Brownback came through and just to meet and greet veterans, military people. And, and he met Alan. And just so happened that Bill happened to be there that day. And uh, he learned that Alan was uh, going to be released from the military with a, a health deferment. So a few days later, he called up Alan and he said, do you need a job? And Alan says, yeah, I need a job. He goes, I want you to come and work for me. Alan went and worked for him. He made sure he went to college and got his college degree. And as far as I know, he could still be working for Sam Brownback. So I have a warm spot in my heart for Sam Brownback. He's in trouble right now in Kansas because great experiment like uh, people like to do. Uh, no one likes to pay taxes and maybe if we cut taxes, it's going to uh, help our economy. Well, they made drastic cuts in Kansas taxes and so far it has done nothing but hurt. As much as we might not like paying taxes, Jesus said, or the question we have in today's text to Jesus was, is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? And of course the Pharisees who did not want to pay taxes, they didn't also want to hang around with the Heridians who were people who liked the Roman occupation, so they send their disciples to Jesus. To, with the Herodians to ask the question, is it lawful to pay taxes or not? And Jesus said, show me a coin. Of course, they just like us had all kinds of taxes to pay, but, in, but specifically the tax that they were talking about was the yearly tax every citizen of Jerusalem, of Israel, had to pay to the Romans. And you used a denarius, which was a Roman coin. And a denarius, Jesus says, whose inscription is on it? Uh, whose likeness? Caesar's. And what was the inscription? Caesar Augustus, the high priest, the divine high priest, who was announcing his divinity, but also that, uh, and in this pagan religion of theirs. So a good Jew would not carry such a coin. Whose inscription? Caesar's. So Jesus says, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and give to God what belongs to God. In a sense, he said, if Caesar wants the tax, give it to him. Uh, ever since then, Christians have had done the understanding, as the Apostle Paul put it in, uh, in Romans 13 that we together, we, we cooperate with the governing powers. He said, pay to all what is due them, taxes to whom taxes are due, revenue to whom revenue is due, respect to whom respect is due, honor to whom honor is due. 
we render unto Caesar, render unto the government what they expect. Do we pay too much in taxes? I'll let the politicians determine that. But then he said, Jesus said, and here's where it hits us. Render unto God, give to God what belongs to God. What belongs to God? Well, if we used Jesus' question, whose image is on that coin? And they said Caesar's. Well, give that to Caesar. What, we might ask, has God's image that we're supposed to give to God? Well, if we go back into the first chapter of Genesis, after God had created everything, we, in one sense we could say that creation has God's mark, God's image on it. But when it comes to the very end of creation, when humans hadn't been created yet, the statement was, let us now make humans in our image. We humans are made with the image of God. Stamped, we could say, with the image of God. So what are we to render to God? What are we to give to God? Well, we could say, humans, ourselves, you and I, whose inscription? Don't we do that um, when we baptize our children? We say, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. You want to make sure, yes, we're created in God's image, but now you have another mark too, the cross of Christ forever. We've stamped them with the image of Christ. So the whole point is, we belong to God. Everything we have, everything we are, belongs to God. Now, how do we give it back to God? Back in um, in oh, the Sunday Magazine was going to uh, do a um, give an award for the a Faith in Life Award. I think communities have picked this up. I know uh, the Council of Churches has sort of picked up on this. Faith and Community Award. So they asked for nominations, and of course, all kinds of people were being nominated. People who had given huge sums of money to charities and to churches, and uh, uh, people who had uh, perfect attendance uh, records in their churches. And people were quite surprised when, when they received when they found out who was the recipient of the Faith in Life Award. And that had been um, all because of this letter. And here's the letter. It announced Anthony. Anthony is a plumber. He helped some people fix up a house for my friend's family because their first house burned down. He also visits my grandmother in the nursing home and makes her happy with his stories and his harmonica playing. He is a lot like Jesus. I hope he wins. But if he doesn't, it won't matter. He will be the same old Anthony. And it was signed, Love, Ann. I like that. He makes my grandmother happy with his stories and harmonica playing. And even if he doesn't win, it won't matter. He'll be the same old Anthony. I think Anthony could be a model for us of giving back to God what belongs to God. Give to God what belongs to God. 
Sam, or Mark Sanborn is a well-known motivational speaker, and he tells about uh, someone called Charlie Tremendous Jones. Anyone with a name with tremendous in it, you know he's got to be a salesman of some sort or, or whatever. But he happened to be someone who uh, did have a, a charismatic personality and made millions of dollars. And Mark Stanborn says he was one of the greatest philanthropists that he had known. Gave all kinds of money and gave of his time to all kinds of uh, uh, services. And, but one day, what made Charlie notable was that one day Charlie announced that he was going to stop giving. And that shocked all of his friends because he was such a generous person, both with time. So he was going to stop giving. So he was asked, there's got to be something behind that. Why stop giving? And he said this, everything I have, my life, my potential, my time has been given me. I've decided to spend the rest of my life returning. So he wasn't changing anything. He just wasn't giving anymore. He was returning. It all belonged to God. He was now going to return it. He realized that he hadn't truly been giving to begin with. He had really been returning anyway. He was returning what God had already given him. So when Jesus says, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, yes, we are to be good citizens. We are. It is, we are responsible. We should vote. We are responsible. We should pay whatever, the, whatever taxes are due. But he says to us, give to God what belongs to God. Especially, give yourself everything that makes up you stamped with the impression, the image of God, marked with the cross of Christ forever. Tennyson, in his... Uh, at, in, uh, knights of the Round Table wrote this poem to the knights. For good ye are and bad, and like to coins, some true, some light, but every one of you stamped with the image of the king. Well, we could say we're stamped with the image of the king, God Almighty, our king. So, the lesson today is, give to God what belongs to God. Amen.
living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Lord of the church, help us to give to you what is yours. We are thankful you made us in your image. Make us faithful stewards of our being. Hear us, O God. Lord of all, Help us to support one another. Bless our communities, sustain local businesses, and remove enmity between neighbors. Hear us, O God. Lord of the nations, teach us to fight for justice, to liberate the oppressed, and to advocate for those who have no voice. We hold before you all who have been affected by the Ebola virus for the children who are now orphans, for the parents who have lost their children, for the medical professionals who care for the sick, and for those who are working on a vaccine. We pray for those who have died in the avalanches in the Himalayas. We pray for peace in Iraq, Syria, Afghanistan, and other war-torn regions. We pray that the peace talks between the student protesters and the Hong Kong government will bring forth a fair and just outcome. We pray for all the earth, that we may learn to walk gently, bringing healing and new life. Hear us, O God. Lord of life, restore the minds, bodies, and spirits of those who are sick. We remember especially Elton Burnell, Lyle Dolly, Linda Demery, Zach Drake, Samir Godfrey, Grant Hayden, Bonnie Holcomb, Jim Lampy, Darlene McLaughlin, Suzanne No, Paul Olin, Gina Rutan, David Seward, Katie Snaff, Mary Thomas, and Ramona Vaughn. Are there any others? Lord of the resurrection, help us to rejoice in your promises. Gladden the hearts of those who grieve, especially the family and friends of Maggie Jones and of Charles Fuller. Hear us, O God. Trusting in your mercy and goodness, we bring before you these prayers and whatever else you see that we need in the name of the one who sets us free, Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen.
merciful God, as grains of wheat scattered upon the hills were gathered to become one bread, so let your church be gathered together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. For yours is the glory through Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await in his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I realize I have forgotten the preface, so this is the preface. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. All is ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come. You may be seated. body of Christ given for you. The 
blood of Christ shed for you. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace.
Amen. O oh God, the host at every meal, at this table you spread out a feast for all peoples, the bread of life and the cup of salvation. Send us from this banquet to invite others into these good things, to let justice roll down like waters, and to care for the least of our sisters and brothers, through Jesus Christ, our Sovereign and our Savior. Amen. Well, we had uh, about 14 of our confirmation students at worship last night, and they are finishing up a retreat. I believe they're sleeping. Well, may, may, maybe they're awake. If I were their age, I'd be awake um, upstairs. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity to uh, remind a lot of you who are here that Lydia Circle meets tomorrow at 7 o'clock and we meet in the music room and to invite any of you who would like to um, join us um, to come and attend. 7 in the morning? Yeah, and, and 7 at night too. We'll, we'll be there both times. At 7 at night. <laughs> See what I have to put up with. <laughs> Uh, read your bulletin, I think, um, and then receive this benediction. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the grace that sustains every breath we take, the love of God that gives us courage and strength, and the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit that fills our hearts with comfort and peace, be with you and all those you care about, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Guided by the gospel, we
Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.